human development. So yesterday we talked about some basic things, fertilization, implantation. Okay. So this is the basic uh, diagram which give you an idea. So here it will take seven to eight days to implantation from fertilization to implantation. Okay. So the in the endometrium, the embryonic disc will enter and one layer will form. Okay. And further you can see that here approximately 12th day the embryonic disc is there. Okay, after 12, 14 days, embryonic disc, how it will uh, developing and the head of embryo will start at 20 days. Okay, and after four to five weeks, after one month, one and a half month, the limbs, umbilical cord, all are begins. Okay, so now we will talk about placenta and umbilical Cord. The placenta is made of both fetal and maternal tissue. The coroin of the embryo and the endometrium of the uterus contribute and the placenta is formed by the third month of gestation. Twelfth week, the mature placenta is a flat disc about 7 inches in diameter. So the, uh, the placenta will begin at the twelfth week, means uh, third month. Okay, So it will... Uh, uh, need tissue, which tissue? Both uh, fetus and maternal. Means the baby's mother uh, who is going to deliver the baby, so he is maternal. So his tissue and fetus tissue both will start to develop placenta. So it is about 7 inches, 17 centimeter in diameter. Okay. The structure of small portion of placenta is shown in 12.21.5. So let's see once placenta. Hmm. You can see that this is the placenta. Okay, this is the 16th week placenta. And this whole baby is there. Limbs, okay, head, neck, okay, extremity. This is the umbilical cord, okay. Very, this is a very good picture. Okay, of the nature. Okay, so you can see that this is the placenta, this is the uterus, this is the umbilical cord is coming here from here. So here it will give free uh movable for the baby. This is the fluid, amniotic fluid, which have to be maintained for the maintaining of the friction and uh, damage of the fetus and movement of the fetus. And you can see this is the cervix. This is the closed by an uh, mucus to leakage of the fluid and all the things. You can as well as we have the placenta here and the vagina. So very good picture, okay. So, Notice that the fetal blood vessels are within maternal blood sinus, but there is no direct connection between fetal and maternal vessels. Normally, the blood of the fetus does not mix with that of the mother. The placenta has two functions, to be the site of exchange between maternal and fetal blood and to produce hormones to maintain pregnancy. We will consider the exchanges first. So basically, the placenta... Uh, is on the blood vessels, whatever is the, it is separate for fetal and maternal. So both are separate, not both are mixed. They are separate. Their blood is mixing separately. Blood is going separately. So placenta is the main having two functions. So what is exchanges between maternal and fetal blood? So exchanges from uh mother to fetal, fetus to mother. Okay, this is the exchange. And the second is to produce hormones. So, we need development. We need hormones. Okay, estrogen, progesterone. So, these are the hormones for development. Whatever baby is there, it will develop. And other hormones will stop working because these is needed for development. The fetus is dependent upon the mother for oxygen and nutrition and for the removal of waste products. 
The umbilical cord connects the fetus to the placenta. Within the cord are two umbilical arteries that carry blood from the fetus to the placenta. One umbilical vein that returns blood from the placenta to the fetus. So here, mm -hmm. uh, with the help of cord, umbilical cord, the blood circulation, whatever happening, is in with the help of umbilical cord. So umbilical cord have arteries and umbilical cord have vein. One vein two arteries okay arteries will supply the bad blood but vein will collect the waste material or deoxygenated blood from placenta returns from uh, fetus to placenta placenta to the mother okay when blood in the umbilical arteries enter the placenta co2 and Waste products in the fetal capillaries diffuse into maternal blood sinus. Oxygen diffuses from the maternal blood sinus into the fetal diffuses capillaries. Nutrients enter the fetal blood by diffusion active transport mechanism. This oxygen and nutrient rich blood then flows through the umbilical vein back to the fetus. Okay, when the baby is delivery at the end of gas station. So basically, this is the exchange of blood is happening by the process called diffusion process. Okay. Diffusion process and active transport. Whatever nutritions are reaching, it is by active transport and exchange of gases will happen in diffusion process. Already you studied in blood circulation. When the baby is delivery, delivered at the end of gas station the umbilical cord is cut the placenta then detaches from the uterine wall and is delivered and the rest of umbilical cord as of the afterbirth the blood in the uh, remnant of the umbilical cord contains abundant stem cells and their potential to become different kinds of cell is between that of embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells Umbilical cord stem cells have already been used to treat newborns with infantile car based disease, a neurological disorder that is fatal by the age of two years. Such treatment depends on genetic testing and having suitable donated cord stem cell available at birth. Banks of cord blood are being established by some medical centers, and use of cord stem cells may, may, may someday decrease the need for bone marrow transplantation. So basically here, the umbilical cord is very, very helpful because it has the cells which can develop into further cells. Okay, which can develop into further cells. So basically it is the stem cell. In the umbilical cord, we have base cell, stem cell, which can further develop into differential cells. It may be adult cell, everything. Okay, so basically it is very helpful. So you have number of diseases which can be treated with the help of stem cells, basically genetic disorders. Okay, uh, so here we have the number of stem cell banks which can store this umbilical cord during after delivery. After delivery, we have umbilical cord of the baby in his umbilicus. Okay. So we can, what we have to do, we have to give this umbilicus and they will store uh, according to their protocols. Okay. So basically, it will help. So stem cell therapy is beginning, uh, I think so in the coming, coming days, it is, it is very popular to treat all the diseases, mainly genetic diseases. Okay. So this is all about placenta. So how, what is placenta? What is other things we discussed? Now, placental hormones. So, what are the hormones? Let's talk about that. The first hormone secreted by placenta is human uh, chronionic gonadotropin, HCG, which is produced by the chorion of the em early embryo. The function of HCG is to stimulate the corpus luteum in the maternal ovary so that it will continue to resist to secrete estrogen and progesterone. The secretion of progesterone is particularly important to prevent contraction of the myometrium, which would otherwise result in miscarriage of the embryo. Once HCG enters maternal circulation, it is secreted in urine, which is the basis of 
for many pregnancy tests. Tests for HCG in maternal blood are even more precise and can determine whether the pregnancy has occurred even before a menstrual period is missed. So here, very, very important, not uh, uh, important for us because this hormone is helpful to release the, to stimulate the corpus luteum. HCG, human uh, chorionic gonadotropin. Okay, human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. So it will stimulate corpus luteum, first thing. What is the function? Next, after this function, it will be excreted from the urine. Okay, if this amount is high, so we assume that the uh, the by the help of uh, pregnancy uh, urine test, we assume that HCG is positive means the the female is pregnant. Okay, with this help of hormone only. Okay, so basically, so corpus luteum will uh, release progesterone and estrogen. So to maintain myometrium will not contract. So myometrium to stop for contraction, to prevent from contraction, because if contraction occurs, miscarriage will happen. So we need, we need progesterone and estrogen. Okay, the corpus luteum is a small structure, however, and cannot seek a sufficient amounts of estrogen progesterone to maintain full term pregnancy. The placenta itself begins to secrete estrogen progesterone within a few weeks, and the levels of these hormones increases until birth. As the placenta takes over, the secretion of HZT decreases, and the corpus luteum becomes non functional. During pregnancy, estrogen and progesterone inhibit the anterior pituitary secretion of SH and LNS. So, no other ovarian follicles develop. This placental hormones also prepare the mammary glands for lactation. So here, very, very important. Next thing is that the corpus luteum, which is uh, which secrets estrogen and progesterone, is not sufficient for whole nine months pregnancy. So what nature gives that? Placenta itself releases estrogen and progesterone, but at not at the beginning, when the after 12 weeks, 15 weeks, then the placenta will will. Uh, release estrogen progesterone. So basically, first, that's the there's the reason. First three months are very important for any uh, female. So okay, because they are the la most chances of more chances of uh, um, uh, what can I tell you that uh, uh, miscarriage, more chance of miscarriage. So that's the reason doctors give estrogen and progesterone hormone capsules so they will advise to take weekly ones or whatever the their protocol according to their protocol they will give yeah, the amount basically first three months needed uh, also naturally producing but in some ladies it is decreases so it may cause miscarriage okay because if no progesterone no estrogen this what will happen myometrium will contract Contract will give miscarriage. Okay. So first thing is that we have to remember. Second thing is that the during pregnancy, if the progesterone and estrogen levels are high, so what will happen? FSH, LSH will be low because no other ovarian follicles will develop. So because very important. And placenta also will release the hormones to inhibit mammary glands. Okay. The placenta also secretes relaxin. Which help in helps uh, to inhibit contraction of the myometer. And relaxin also permits stretching of the ligaments of the pubic symphysis so that this joint will give a little if necessary during birth. Okay, so here relaxin also will help hormone to inhibit myometrium along with estrogen and progesterone. We need relaxin also. Okay, so very, very important hormones we need to remember whenever we are treating female patients during pregnancy. Okay, so in the electro homeopathy, we have the medicines uh, which are very important during pregnancy. We will advise to stop like C1, RE, okay, because they are the uh, will stimulate the myocardium or these hormones, whatever may be. So, we'll discuss in electro homeopathy or in medicine. So, here we have the parturition and labor. Parturition is the rather form term of birth. 
and labor is a sequence of events that occur during birth. The average gestation period is 40 weeks. Means 40 weeks is the normal pregnancy period. Think about we call nine, nine months, nine months or above nine months, ten months, four weeks, ten months, four weeks a month. Or some months have four and a half weeks. Okay. So we will call nine and a half months, nine to nine and a half or nine to ten months. So this is the gestation period. With the range of 37 to 42 weeks. Toward the end of the gestation, the placenta secretion of progesterone decreases. So here what happened? After 40 weeks or 42 weeks, what happened? The gestation. During this period, what will happen? So the progesterone decreases. Okay. Decreases. So what? Will happen. What will happen? Myometrium will contract. So then the pain will happen. The uh, mother will, maternal will tell you know, the female. They tell that I have pain. So we will take him to nearby hospital or like primary health care center or any hospital related to gynec or obstetric. At this time, the feet is often oriented head down within the uterus. Labor itself may be divided into three stages. So let's see the diagram. So this is that the head of the fetus will come here. Okay, the complete baby is developed. Okay, this is the amino sac, amino fluid. Okay, this is the spine. Okay. Uh, next we have this mucus plug. Mucus plug is great. Water will come some due due to the contraction. Okay. So these other things will happen. So basically, the uh, labor is divided into three stages. First stage, second stage, and after that, third stage. Let's talk about all the three stages. First stage, dilation of cervix happen. Cervix will dilate. Here is a diagram. Very good diagram. Okay. Cervix will dilate it. Okay. As the uterus contracts, so uterus contract, the amino sac is forced into the cervix, which dilate the cervical opening at the end of the stage. The amino sac break, break. So here we have the amino sac already you've seen. So it will break. The which may uh, the fluid leaves to the vagina. So the fluid will come outside. This stage lies in about 8 to 12 hours, but may be very considerable. So, first will happen this. Uh, blood will come out. Cervix uh, uh, contraction of will happen. The fluid will come out. Second stage, delivery of the infant. More powerful contraction of the uterus are brought about by oxytocin. Oxytocin is released by the posterior pituitary gland and perhaps by the placenta itself and some amount of placenta is also released oxytocin and pituitary gland will also release to improve more contraction okay this stage may be prolonged by several factors but it is long period posterior then then head down delivery may be difficult so what will happen if the head is not here head is upside so what will happen the delivery is more serious or more uh, it will take time so of what they do just will advise please do c-section caesarean section which is delivery of the fetus through a surgical incision in the abdominal wall and uterus for some women the central opening in the pelvic bone may be too small to permit a vaginal therapy. fetal distress as determined by fetal monitoring of heartbeat for example also require a caesarean section so some some need uh, surgery because the pubic bone, the area is very small to deliver the baby. So they will do C-section. And the third stage, delivery of placenta. After the delivery of baby, the placenta will come. Continued contraction of the uterus, expel the placenta. Placenta will come outside uh, within 10 minutes after delivery of the infant. 
is some bleeding at this time, but the uterus rapidly decreases in size and contraction compels the endometrium to close the ruptured blood vessel at the former sides of the placenta. This is important to prevent severe maternal hemorrhage. So what will happen? The placenta will come out. So the contraction stopped and the uterus will uh, resize. Okay, the size is decreased. So this is will happen after delivery. So this is the very, very important. So every female uh, will have this uh, at experience this in his career so very uh god's gift it is very natural thing okay so basically uh we have to understand okay here very good uh thing is given embryo how the baby begins gradually okay when the lips will begin when the weeks are given here you can see that weight okay when the urinary system will begin so everything is given you have to note down that okay here is the abgar score after birth the, we will have to check the heartbeat respiration muscle tone okay reflex response you can color so they will check heartbeat over 100 per minute is necessary. We will give two score. Respiration, strong cry. We need, okay. And active motion, okay. Uh, eye blinking uh, and uh, uh, limbs uh, movement. Mostly eye blinking is there. And, uh, and cry response after pinching anything, stimulation. In color, white color, uh, no color, color means here, uh, pale color, reddish color, and bluish color. Because if the necessary amount of uh, amount of blood circulation is not there, the, the baby is in pale in color. Okay, so this is very important thing we have to understood. So I think you understand this. We will discuss the infant and bird and genetics tomorrow. If any doubts, please ask. Okay.